Hello, everybody. Welcome. Today, we are here to talk to you about the Great American Recipe. Hi, Fu. What's up, Sylvia? What's up? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so fun. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. You know, uh, we've been talking, and ever since we've met through this whole process, we've been friends. We met each other's kids, our, our significant others. What a cool... I'm super so, stoked. So special. For all of you that don't know what the Great American Recipe is, a new PBS cook competition that is very uplifting, very emotional. It is about the recipes, but it is also about the story behind the recipes, why we cook the way we cook and how everything around us influences us to cook the way we cook. And then uh, part of the factor is the multiculturalism uh, that's behind it as well, the different ethnicities that make up the melting pot, no pun intended, of America. Yeah, perfect. So if you haven't watched it, you can stream it on the PBS app, and I will leave a link in the description box, and also on pbs.org online, or you can watch it every Friday at 9 p.m. A Central. Check your local listings because every station has a different sometimes times and day. So just to make sure that it is on Friday for you. You know, I just wake up this morning, I realized that I'm gonna make hamburgers and I was planning to make the bread and I haven't started the bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go and buy it. Wait a minute, hold on. You're making the bread from scratch? Yes, I like to make my hamburger buns from scratch. Oh my. Not crazy or what? Wow, impressive. Thank impressive. You. Yeah, but today is going to be store bought because, you know, look at me. I'm yes. just chatting with my friend Fu and I'm making the bread for dinner. So anyway, <laughs> so before we start talking about the first episode, I just want to tell you guys why we're doing this, right? So yeah. Fu and I are very good friends, and we thought that as we watch the series, it could be fun just to chat, you know, and just have our impressions and maybe tell you something else that you don't know, that you didn't see in camera, and it helps you to understand the whole episode, all the stories. Uh, you have any questions, any comments, anything you would like to know, just leave us a comment and add it to the following video. Okay, so but cool. let's tell how we met. Well, so going into this, I missed my original layover flight, and then I had to catch the later one. Little did I know you were on my flight, uh, my flight, and then when we got there at the, at the shuttle, my you came into my shuttle. <laughs> my shuttle. <laughs> You're right. You're right. It, it's yours. No. It, it, was yours. it was yours. I'm a comic. I'm an aspiring comic, and I'm I'm an observer. That's how I find material. That's just the way I am. So I'm rather quiet if you don't know me. So I just sit back and just you know uh, was observing this whole process. You know, not knowing what's going to happen or what have you. And then here comes sweet Sylvia coming into the shuttle with me. And she's asking me a million questions, and I'm like, "What is? What? Come on! I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the lay of the land." And she's like, "What time is it? Where are we going? What are you gonna make? What do you like to cook?" <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we hit it off. I mean, we found out we were both in California. We both have two, two kids. We have very supportive, significant uh, others, and uh, you know. That's, that was my take on it. It was uh, a beautiful friendship. Since the beginning, yeah. You're right, because you were so serious. And I keep asking you questions. And at some point I said, oh, maybe he doesn't want me to. <laughs> He's very serious. Later that I know, when we go to a place where we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know who else is there, and we right away find each other. So I think that was a bond that just in, instantly you know, start growing on us and then it was easier for us because I remember that we actually the next day we we went to breakfast together because the only people we know right, right. that's right we together that's right. before we met everybody else that's right that, I mean you yeah, I mean you, you said it you it's the a little bit of anxiousness that you know when you're going into something brand new I mean you're jumping into a cooking reality competition so when you have an immediate connection Right away, we gravitated. Our personalities are similar. And, you yeah. know, we had the same common interests. So, yeah, it, it worked out great. Right. Now that we told you all about us, that we're going to talk right. to you about the show. I, 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 if, if I may say, I think one, one point is that uh, not only do, do we have a good personal relationship uh, as friends and our families connect together, 
But the cool thing about this concept and this, what we're doing right now is that our passion for food. Definitely. That, help, that helps the, yeah. because I still, as you know, I just texted you yesterday to ask, ask you for advice on, I wanted to make my daughter one of quesadillas and yeah. I needed to know what good cheese was. So it's so very nice to have a friend that you could, that loves food and we can exchange and, you know, ask. So. Back to you, Fu. Remember that I asked you how to make a Vietnamese pizza? <laughs> you say, yeah. Remember when I told you to call Domino's? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about episode one, but at the end of the chat, we're going to answer some questions that we had gotten on social media. So make sure you stay until the end. Let's talk about episode one. It was the very first thing that we did in a cooking show. It was the very first day. We didn't know what to expect. I was very nervous that morning, even though I always feel confident about what I cook. And I try to, for the show, I'm trying to cook dishes that I'm familiar with. It was like, I don't know how this going to go. How do you feel that morning? How oh you my feel about gosh. The, the level of butterflies and anxiousness, you know, of cooking, you know, no matter how many times you cook for me personally, uh, how many times I cook the dish, a hundred times for family and friends and stuff like that. But when you add into the element that number one, you're cooking in front of strangers. Number two, you're cooking under lights and cameras. Uh, you're cooking under a time uh, restraint, and then you're cooking for celebrated chefs. It's just a tad stressful. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more tension than you could come from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that walking in that barn. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because I think that's the, uh, for me, it was that, like, really first impression of, wow, well, okay, this is going to be my kitchen. And I remember walking into the barn and looking at my station and how it was, everything place and a few things that they were there that we can talk about it probably in the next episode. Uh, but also walking to the uh, stations of everybody else. Yeah, I remember that vividly. You and I talked about it in the past about how we would be able to, we would peek through because we were there for a couple days, right? And we didn't get a chance to, be exposed or they didn't show us the barn yet the in, in interior our stations yeah. so we would peek and you see know. how much progress or what it looked like so we would got tiny little glimpses but you know I'm the same way uh when it comes to cooking you I wanted to feel the station you know you wanted to see where things were at reach whether it be the knives the utilities where's the thermometer all the plating the dishware and so forth so I wanted to get my the bearings so that you can build comfort level instantaneously once you knew where you're cooking then you could kind of like okay that hopefully stays the same and then you know then you could know that'll put you a little bit at ease one of the first things that I was a little concerned about was about the time that we have for each recipe because you know you can cook something so many times and maybe be ready in that amount of time. But once you put, like Fu said, you know, you're cooking for other people, the judges come and talk to us, the producers ask you questions. And so if you start counting that, it's like, oh my gosh, 60 minutes, it's not 60 minutes. And then you need to plate, right? right. <laughs> so I keep asking, well, how much time I have? How much time I have? So how do you feel about that? Do you have a strategy about how to organize your time to make sure that by the end of the 60 minutes, we have everything on and all the plates ready? The way I approached it was I visualized my dish. So if we were in, a, in the 60 minute challenge, I broke it down within five minutes, what I should be doing. And then I would visualize it in my hotel room. <laughs> And then I would, you know, <laughs> during, during the, when the camera was off, people would be hanging out and chatting. And I'm like by myself doing these movements. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, what is wrong with him? Uh, but I would visualize it, mentally what I was doing, when I should be chopping, when I should be sauteing, when I should, how long is this marinade work? With that being said, you know, as, as we know, sometimes even if you visualize it down or if you, even if you write down the steps, equipment can be a factor, be accidentally cutting it wrong or I burned it and I overlooked it. Yeah, for me, it was very exciting to see that first episode on TV because yeah. obviously we were there and we kind of knew what was happening, but really we didn't because we didn't get to see what 
like other cooks that they were far away from what we're doing. I mean, right. since you and Nikki and I were kind of fairly close, we can more or less see what we're doing, but we didn't see the other people. So it was funny for me to see at the end when they start like counting down, like everybody's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, it was lovely to see that first episode when finally we can see the final product. Yeah, I agree. Not not only the time, but that first time we got to see that episode, uh, because when you're like so hyper focused and cooking and with mm -hmm. the time restraint and everything, you don't get a chance to really look and see what you, and the other contestants and friends are cooking. So yeah. what a treat to see you cook, to see Dan cook, Nikki cook. You know that I, that to me personally, that's very refreshing and fun to see uh, my friends cook out there. So that was fun. What do family and friends say about you when you look so serious cooking in there since you're so funny? Yeah, yeah. When I'm like cooking, like uh, my wife will attest, I'm pretty, yeah. yeah. I'm no fun. I'm no fun to be around in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, and actually you can see, well, we're talking about just the first episode, but I think the first episode was for all of us a little bit it's more stress, I think. By the second dish, you were a little bit more, just a little bit more relaxed. Anything kind of was challenging for you? Everything happened according to plan or you have some issues that we didn't see in camera? Uh, so for the second challenge of the first episode, I made the beef stew and toasted some bread. And I wish I would have left it in there a little bit longer to make it a little bit crispier, more like a chip. Besides that, I was pretty uh, content and happy with what I delivered. How about you? First dish was the chilaquiles. So I decided to try something new that day, the deep fryer. Burn the chips twice. Oh my God. I mean, they fry so fast. So the third time finally made it right. To be Wait, right that was, that's the first time you used a deep fryer. Yes, I'm glad I did it, but it was something that put a little bit more stress on me. But the other thing I didn't do, I didn't add salt to the chips. A lot of us yeah. got the comment about seasoning. Right. And I think that was a first eye opener for me because I never cooked for a chef. Right. right. Just for my family and my own taste. That's a great but, point, Sylvia. Yeah. It seemed like it was a universal note for the majority, if not all of us. Yes. was in regards to salting the food. You know, you were speaking about the fryer the first time you're using it. I used the pressure cooker for the beef stew. And that's the second time I ever used a pressure cooker. The first time I used it, I used it to test it to be on the show because I had to think of just in case backup, if something were to go right, I wanted to make sure I had a backup plan. But prior to that, I never used the pressure cooker in my life. It's that's brave. So now you use the pressure cooker more at home? That I, that's, a, that's a good point. Now that when I make uh, some soups, I do use a pressure cooker. Let's talk about Christine. She left in that first episode, and I think a lot of people don't get to know her as much as we knew her. Because before we started the show, we were like probably two days before filming. So that's we right. were playing with each other. Uh, she was so fun. I mean, she was... Very energetic, has a great uh, laugh. She was always moving. She, every time we were waiting for anything, even filming or eating or just waiting for some reason, she was doing yoga poses. She was always moving. She's very confident and she has really fun stories and makes us laugh every time we have uh, we cook with her, right? That's yeah. Right. She, she had an infectious laugh, a beautiful personality. She was bubbly. When she left, there was a, it was a it was a bummer because there was a void in the group. Yeah, you felt right. it. You you could see it a little bit before the edition doesn't show everything, but we all feel when when she left. Since this is a cooking show and we love to cook, let's give some cooking tips. Sure. For me personally, my beef salad on that first challenge, uh, my cooking tip would be to cook that beef. After you marinate it, that tastes really good if you cook it over wood coal or just standard traditional coal. It's fantastic. It brings out more smokiness flavor to the meat itself. It's super delicious. And then, yeah, blanch and roast some veggies and grab some green, seasonal greens, put it together, put it together your favorite vinaigrette, and you have yourself a nice meal. That sounds, that sounds so delicious. So my tip for you is that when you are going to cook meat, always leave it out of your fridge for at least 30 minutes until it gets to room temperature. That would help for a more even cook, you know, because when it's very cold, the interior is going to take some more time to cook. So you have this uneven cooked meat. That's a great tip. So we are at the end of the chat. Let's answer a question. Uh, I'm in love with the building. Is this someone's barn? It wasn't a private barn. It's, it's a venue. It seems that there is for parties and 
meetings, and there is more than one barn. It was in Virginia, north of Richmond. Very pretty, very green. It was very hot that day. Like what you see us all sweating so much on the first episode, but it was in a beautiful place. And, um, and yeah, there was an empty barn. They just built that barn. I mean, everything you see around, all the stations, all the things in the walls, everything was brought by the amazing production company. That's what you see. Yeah, it was, I agree. Quite, quite impressive to see what they can do to, yeah, to, absolutely. to put a working kitchen inside an empty barn. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's all for this first video. Okay. If you have any questions, any opinions, leave us a comment. There is also a lot of the links uh, for our social media. You want to follow us there where we also share more about cooking you want to learn something new food do a lot of vietnamese and other things and i do a lot of mexican so you can follow us there if you like this video give us a like share it with your friends and family and please watch the, the show the great american recipe on pbs friday nights at 9 p.m a central but check your local listings or you can stream on the pbs app and you you can download on your devices or on your computer and pbs.org did I forget anything, Paul? It's such a great show. Uh, it's a fantastic show for family. More fun to watch than to be participating in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make something delicious, eat, and watch the show. And watch the next video, episode two. Thank you, Paul. I'll see you. Thank you, Sonia. Bye. Bye. Peace.